In this video, I'll be reviewing a really cool Blender add-on for creating landscapes, and that is the Terrainscapes Blender add-on. So the add-on creator contacted me and asked me if I wanted to review this add-on, so thank you for letting me check this out. And if you're interested in purchasing the add-on, then you can check out the product on the Blender Market with my affiliate link in the description. And if you do purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, then I'll earn a small commission, so that's also a great way to help support me and this channel. But I only recommend content to my audience, which I really stand behind. This result here is something that I just threw together, and you can really see the add-on has lots of detail, you can see all the detail in this mountains, and your landscapes are very, very customizable. So in this video, I'll be reviewing the add-on by showing you how how you can create a scene similar to this with the add-on. So once you've downloaded the add-on, you can open up a new scene in Blender, and we're going to install the add-on by clicking here on Edit, and then we're going to go here to the Preferences. Then you can click over on the Add-ons tab, and you can click on this button here to install the add-on. So here are the add-on files, and I have the full version, so there is the full and also the scattering, so I'm going to select these and click on Install Add-on. And then you can search for them here in the search bar by searching for Terrain, and you can see here's the full and the scattering, so just check mark those, and then you can click on the Save preferences button so that Blender will always keep these add-ons turned on in your future Blender projects. So let's just close the user preferences now. So I'm just going to delete everything, sorry default cube, and let's now add a landscape. So I'll press the N key to open up the side panel here, and we can go right down here to the terrain scapes. So you're probably not going to have all these tabs, I have a few different Blender add-ons, but right down here, here's the terrain scape add-on, so I'll click on this, and then you don't need any object, you can just have a blank scene, and you can click on the plus here to add a new terrain. So when I clicked on the plus here, you can see it added that object. Now let's double click on this to rename it, and I'm just going to rename it to Landscape. So we're now going to open up the height right here, and then we can open up the layers and the settings. So if you want to, you can load a preset, and if you click right here, you can see that the add-on actually has some presets for you. So they're pre-made landscapes. I'm not going to do that though, I'm going to click away from that. I'm going to instead scroll right down here to the layers, and I'm going to manually add them. So let's just zoom into this object here. I'll click on the plus here to add a landscape. So you can see there's some different categories here. And so there's mountains, you can see the different mountains that you have available, then there's the blend Blender textures, so you have some textures here, and then just single mountains, so these are just one mountain, and then finally here we have the cliffs, so if you want to add some cliffs you can do that. You can also rename this, so I'm just going to rename this like Mountain 1, I'll just do MT for short, and then right here I'm going to choose Mountain, and then I am going to choose the Peak Mountain, I think that is a pretty cool one, and then I will click on OK to add it. So you can see now it's added a layer of this mountain, and so you can see right now here on the landscape there is this little bump here for the mountain. Now it looks very low quality, but we will fix that in a moment. So after you add the layer, if you click on this layer, there's going to be settings for that layer. So you can change the location of this mountain by just dragging these values, and you can also change the scale so I could make this mountain bigger if I wanted to, so I might make it a little bit bigger or maybe even a bit smaller. And then I can also rotate it on the z-axis. Now you can see it's pretty low quality, so we need to scroll right up here, and there's the subdivisions here on the settings. So I'm going to turn the viewport to like an 8, but then I'm actually going to have it render at like a 12, so it'll render with much higher detail. So you could turn the viewport up to 12 if you wanted to as well, but that's going to be pretty laggy. You can see that took a while to load up. So it is very detailed. I'm just going to keep it down to like an 8 though, and then I'll render it with 12. However, if I go into the rendered view, you can see that there is lots of detail there. So now what we can do is we can add another mountain. First, I'm just going to move this around a little bit more. So I'll go down here to this layer, and I'll just move this mountain around a little bit and maybe bring it back a bit. All right, so I can now add another layer to add another mountain next to the first one. So I'll click on the plus here. I'm just going to rename this to like mountain two, and then I can click here on the mountains. And this one, I'm going to just choose a smooth mountain and then click on OK. And you can see it's added another one. So now again here, if you click on this layer, I can just drag this around, drag the X and Y around, and I can move this mountain. I might also scale it up on the Z axis so it's a bit taller and maybe scale the entire thing up a bit. So What's really cool about the add-on is that you can mix different mountains together. So if I wanted like a mountain range where I wanted to mix these two mountains together, you can see they are merging as they come together. And then if I wanted to move both of these layers at once, then I could do that right up here. So you can see these settings right up here are going to control both mountains at the same time, so it'll control both layers. However, if you scroll down here and click on these layers, then you can just control one single mountain. So I want to see this in the rendered view, so I'll hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view. And you can see we don't really have that good lighting, so 
So actually what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using the Pro Atmo Blender add-on, which is a really great sky add-on, which the same add-on creator made. And I'll also have a link in the description to that one. You can check it out on the Blender Market. And that also is an affiliate link in the description. So if you purchase that add-on with the link in the description, then that'll help to support me as well. So what I'm going to do is click right here. This is the other add-on. So I'm just going to enable this. And I do have a separate video reviewing this add-on. So if you'd like to check out that review video, I'll have a link to that in the description. So I'm just going to turn it on and then I can open up the sun here and I'm just going to rotate this. I think kind of like a day scene will be nice. So I'm going to rotate this over a bit so that there's kind of shadows on that side. That's pretty cool. I think the evening is really nice, but I do want to make it a bit higher. So I'll turn up the elevation, just make it a bit brighter. And then also we can add some clouds. So I'll click on the clouds here and enable the clouds. So I'll maybe I'll choose this first one here. That's pretty nice. And I can turn up the roughness here and turn up the scale a little bit just to add a bit more clouds. So really quickly with that other add-on, I was able to get some really nice lighting. All right, so let's go back here to the landscape. I can scroll here and go back to the terrain scapes. So we now need to add materials to the mountain. So if you keep on scrolling down, you can see there are texture settings. So let's open up the texture settings. Now you can click here on load preset. And if you click here, there are some different cool presets. So for this mountain, this first one is really cool. So I'm going to click on this and just click on okay to add this one. And you can see very quickly, we have some super awesome materials. So there's like some snow there and there's also like some dirt. And so you can see that it's going to add some different layers like a dirt and grass and snow, and you can play around with the settings. So for instance, if I click on grass here, it's going to show me settings for that grass. So I think I want to turn the value down. So I'll maybe turn it to like a 0.8, maybe even like a 0.6. So the grass is a bit darker. That might be a little bit too dark. And I could also turn the saturation up just a little bit to make the grass more saturated. And then if I wanted to add a bit more snow, I could click here on the snow. And if you click on the snow, you can see it has a mask. So if I open up the mask, these masks here are going to tell it where the snow is going to be. So right here, I could click on the height, and then I can just change the value in the gradient. So if I want a bit more snow, I can just turn that value down, and you can see there's going to be a lot more snow on the top of the mountain, so that's really cool. And then also this gradient here, I can just adjust this if I wanted to. I think I'm going to actually click on the noise here, because I want a bit less of that noise. So I'm just going to turn the value down a bit. So there is some noise, but there's a little bit less. And now we have some nice snow-covered mountains. Now I'll come back to this setup in a moment, but I do real quick want to show you how you can manually add materials as well. So I'll come back to this setup, but for now I'll just hit the negative buttons just to get rid of those. So if you want to add textures manually, you can click on the plus here and you can choose a texture. So maybe I'll choose dirt and I can click on OK and I can just rename this layer to dirt. Then I can click on the plus here, choose another one and I'll choose snow, click on OK and I can just rename this to snow. And then you can also change the scale of the texture if you need to. So I want to have the bottom part be dirt, but then the top part be snow. So that is where the masks come in. So you can click on the plus here to add a mask, and there are some different masks to choose from. I'm going to choose the gradient one, because this way, if I click on OK, I can use the gradient to make the snow on the top, and then I can make the dirt on the bottom. So now I can just change the value here, and I can just turn this up and then I can drag the gradient value up. And now you can see we just have snow on the top, but then we have dirt on the ground. And I need to click back here on the dirt and I need to turn up the scale so we have more of that texture. I'll just press Control Z though to undo that so I can bring back my other setup here. So now I want to add some more details. I want to add some details to the ground. And then I also want to add some trees and maybe some bushes and things. So what I first want to do is add some more detail to the ground. So I'll go back to solid view. And what I can do is actually scroll back up here and I can add another layer. So right up here on the layers, I'll click on the plus and I'm going to go to the category and I'm just going to choose like the blender texture and I'll just go to noise one and click on okay. Now you can see that it's brought it way up, but we can just change this by changing the Z scale. So I'm going to drag the Z scale way down so that it's smaller. So you can see now it's popping out less. And then I can also just bring the Z location down. And if I go into rendered mode, you can see there's quite a bit more detail. All right, so let's now add some biomes. So I'm just going to scroll down here to the bottom and you can see there is water you can add water if you want to I'm gonna go here to the scattering and we first need to choose an object so I'll click here on the eyedropper and I'm just gonna choose the terrain because we want to add biomes to that terrain and I'll click on add so then you can open up the biomes right here and you can load a biome so if I click here you can see again there's gonna be some really cool presets so there's a jungle there's some trees some forests I am gonna do it more manually so I'll click on the plus here to add a biome. And when you click on the plus here, there's going to be distribution and layers. So I'll open both of these settings up. 
So right here on the layers, we can choose different things. So just like back up here, how you can add different layers for the textures and for the mountains, you can add different layers for the biomes. So I'm gonna click here to add another layer. And then there's a category, so there's rocks and there's grass and many different categories. I'm gonna go here to trees. And then if I click on this, there's a bunch of different trees you can choose from. I'm just gonna keep it at this default one here. So I'll click on okay, and it's gonna add some trees. Now you can see the trees are really big right now. So if I go down here to the options, I wanna turn the instance scale way down. So I'll turn this to a very small number. So for now, I'll turn it down to a 0 0.0005, but I want many more of those trees. So I'm gonna turn up this density amount so that there are more trees. And you can see there is also a low poly setting. So you definitely wanna keep this turned on so that they are low poly, because if not, then the trees will be very detailed and it'll probably crash Blender. Now, if I turn this up to a very large number, you can see it disappears and that is because of the max viewport count so you just need to turn the max viewport count up so I'm going to turn this up to a much bigger number so I turn the max viewport count up and then I can continue to turn the density up more and more so maybe I'll just double the trees so I'll just double that number. And then I do wanna make the trees a little bit smaller. So here on the instant scale, I'll just turn this down a little bit smaller. And then let's maybe double that again. So I'll add even more trees. And again, I need to turn the max viewport count up. Um, so I'll just turn that up even more so it can allow more in the viewport. Now I don't wanna have trees all over the place. I mostly just wanna have the trees on the more flat areas. So again, we can go up here to the distribution and we can add a distribution. So let's click on the plus here. And then you can click here and there's a bunch of different ones you can choose from. So for this scene right here, the slope mask is really cool. And then we do need to play around with the mask here. So I'm just gonna change the value. So you can see if I turn this value up, now there aren't gonna be as many trees on the mountains, but there's gonna be many more trees down here where it is more flat. So I just gave this a render and you can see really quickly I was able to throw together a really cool landscape scene. So that is how to use the Terrainscapes Blender add-on. It's a really great add-on for quickly making landscapes and I can highly recommend it. And as you can see it's also very very customizable. So again if you'd like to purchase the add-on then you can find my affiliate link in the description and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link then I'll earn a small commission and that's a great way to help support this channel. And if you'd like to check out the sky add-on, the sky add-on that I used for this scene, then you can again find a link Link in the description to the Pro Atmo add-on and I've also made a separate review video for the add-on so you can check out that video with the links in the description. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.